Like so many families during <laughs> lockdown, Sophie Ellis Bexter and her mum Janet have been obviously keeping a safe distance. They join me now from their homes, only 10 minutes away, but gosh, they might as well be on the, the other side of the world. How are you two doing? Sophie, lovely to see you. How are you? Good morning. I'm OK, how are you? Real good, real good. Like I say, it's a difficult time, isn't it? Especially for your mum, especially for you, Janet, because you must miss the boys and Sophie, of course. But, you know, it's hard when I'm you don't silly, see your grandkids. Yeah, yeah, and you know what I miss really, really weirdly is the smell of them. Yes. Um, because, you know, the baby ones, um, I, I'm discounting Sunny is going to be 16 this week, although <laughs> I don't mind if I'm person sitting in. But the baby ones, the smell of a baby is irreplaceable. Although I can see them, it's really not the same. No, I understand. I can understand that. And tough for you as well, because I know your husband's very sick and he's been going through a really, really tough time. Getting treatment, how's he doing? He's okay, actually. Um, yeah, he, he he lives with cancer. So, uh, like a lot of people with cancer, his treatment is suspended at the moment. But in this uncertain situation, everybody knows that can't continue forever and ever. He has a wonderful oncologist who will do the best she can to get into treatment when he needs it. But when this started, it was open-ended and it still is. So, yeah, I'm touching wood all the time, but at the moment he's fine, thanks. No, as, as you say, living with cancer... Every day, just getting, take each day as it comes. It's all you can do. Yeah, it's absolutely. all you can do. Now, yeah. I was talking to No Fitzpatrick, you know, the lovely super vet, and he was telling us about how dogs <laughs> and our pets can really help us at this time. And I know that's true for you. Oh, my goodness. Listen, this is not even two way anymore. Our dog is the happiest she has ever been because <laughs> she has company 24-7. She gets a regular daily walk. I mean, she always did, but she really knows it's coming now. And the other thing is that sometimes she'll go and get a toy. And I think she's bringing it because she thinks we might be bored. I'm pretty sure she's cheering us up. It's definitely not two way street. I love that. And I think you're right. I think they know a lot more than we think they do. And okay. Sophie, of course, you have got, you're at home. The boys are all at home. You've got your five boys. How is that going? How is the kind of homeschooling thing going and just keeping them amused? Um, well, actually, yeah, I think the, the keeping amused has sort of taken uh, the, the priority over the homeschooling because I've got them ranging from 15 months to 15 years and I don't, I don't know how to run that kind of school. <laughs> so, um, you know, we, I've sort of prioritised a couple of things. My eldest two who are 11 and nearly 16 have got work that I think they need to keep up with. But for the others, it's just keeping them happy and, you know, as we did... A little bit of stuff in the morning yesterday and then the afternoon we played a really good game of hide and seek. And if that's how we spent our day, that is fine with me. That's OK. Um, yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? I guess the only thing that's that's missing is the fact that you can't you can't see your mum. You know, you can't. See, oh. I mean, obviously you're in touch all the time, but you can't see her. No, and we only lived 10 minutes away. And I had my birthday a couple of weeks ago and that felt very, very strange because normally I'd have all the family round. Um, and... For us, the, the sort of whole um, concept of keeping away from people who are vulnerable and, you know, be away from your loved ones started a little bit sooner, actually, because of John. I felt quite self-conscious about us going round even before the government had said that we should keep our distance. So I actually said to mum a couple of weeks before the lockdown, I said, I think, I think we need to stop coming round after school on Tuesdays as we normally did. And, you know, it, it makes sense because of that. But it's also, yeah, I, I miss family a great deal. I've got two more birthdays in the house this week. Ray's going to be eight on Saturday and Sunny's going to be 16 on Thursday. And, you know, it's quite strange, isn't it, celebrating these happy occasions, but without all the people around that you'd normally invite over to some cake. So. And you're right about, about your stepdad because, you know, obviously he's living with cancer. You don't want to... You don't want to in any way put him in any danger. So it is, you know it's the right thing to do, but that still doesn't make it easier, you know, for, for, for both of you. Are you on the phone all the time? You talking all the time? Yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, we do that. <laughs> and um, I've actually dropped off a couple of bits and bobs of shopping for my mum occasionally and put them near the front door and then run to the end of the path and wave a quick hello. So we've seen each other, I think, at a distance maybe three times. But... Um, yeah, I, I can't wait to just go back to my normal life. I, I think probably like everybody, you know, moment to moment, it's fine. You know, we're used as a family to being at home and spending time with one another. But there's obviously a lot about the way my life is normally that I really like and I miss so much of it. No, I bet you do. But 
you know what? Mm. You're doing your bit to keep everybody entertained and amused. <laughs> because I love the idea of a Friday night disco. And you yeah. really go for it, Sophie. This is a good thing. Yes. Well, you know, it's a disco. You've got to put on your sparkly things. We've got... <laughs> we had um, Richard and I turned 40 last year, so we knew the house lent itself quite well in our kitchen to, to doing a bit of a party as well. We've got a smoke machine and a disco light and a big mirror ball. Um, and actually, yeah, we've done four so far. It'll be again on Friday at 6.30 on my Instagram. We do it live. The kids are crawling everywhere all over the wires. They put on little sparkly things if they want to. Um, you know, but it's optional. Like last Friday, my 11-year-old decided he'd rather be off talking to friends upstairs. That was fine. Um, so it's just their mad mum singing, singing to herself in a kitchen into a phone, basically, every Friday night. I think it's a great <laughs> idea. I, I really do. I think it raises everybody's, you know, anything that's going to make us feel a little bit better right now and just forget. Because I don't know about you, but sometimes when you are listening to music, maybe you're reading a book, maybe you are taking the dog for a walk and you sort of forget, yeah. amazingly enough. Yeah. You yeah. kind of yeah, do. music's an amazing tonic. Yeah. Music always has been an amazing tonic. And I think, as you say, everything's very heavy at the moment. Um, you know, I, at first I thought, oh, should I sing some songs? I thought, people don't want me staring earnestly into my camera looking sad. They want, you know, something a bit silly and daft and fun. And, uh, and that's, so that's what we've been doing. And you know what? It's been really good for us. And the, all the kids are getting into it now. And they'll say, oh, we should use that at the disco. And, like, this morning Ray was helping me choose what cover I'll do on Friday. And, yeah, it's fun. That's really good. And it gives you something else to focus on. Because, like you said, the, the age difference between all of your kids... You've got to kind of explain what's going on in a slightly different way to all of them, don't you? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, the little ones are fine. They don't really know um, too much of what's happening. But I think it's quite tough for uh, the, the elder three, really. They're feeling it a bit more. But, but we're OK. We're OK. They know it's not forever. That's what you've got to be. You've got to be really, really positive. That's the only thing that will get you yeah. through, isn't it, Janet? Just be, just be positive. And are you doing the disco as well on a Friday? Oh, you bet, yeah. And, you know, I had, a, I had a sudden thought, which is not very profound, because obviously, you know, we know what a brilliant job the NHS are doing, and they do that for us all the time. We know what we're learning from this, and we also know that some people are struggling profoundly. But I had an amazing thought this morning that this may be the way we eradicate nits. It just me. <laughs> OK, Dr Hillary, what do we think of this? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, it's one way. I, I'd rather it wasn't this way. I suppose if nobody's, <laughs> if nobody's in touch with anybody... Yeah. I guess, Janet, I guess. <laughs> unless you're, unless you're unfortunate enough to have them, <laughs> then you can't get them treated anywhere. Well, it's... <laughs> It's a thought, and it's an interesting one. Isn't it amazing what you... <laughs> Sophie's like, Mom. But isn't it amazing what you think about in these strange, strange times? Sure. Amazing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a thought I've had myself. Guys, thank you so, so much. I think... Um, well, that's it for today.